Hello Tanks and Tankettes, and welcome back to the Xbox One version of World of Tanks. This time we've got some footage provided by Mad Friday TV, who stuck his watermark on it. Um, I would have preferred it, you know, slightly clearer because it's going to block some of the messages that come up on that side. But whatever, you know who it's from now, I suppose. So this is uh, footage he's provided, captured via uh, a capture card on his PC that's hooked up to his Xbox, and unsurprisingly, he's got his own channel because you're not really going to make that investment of a capture card for getting your World of Tanks Xbox games if you don't have some reason, some motivation for doing so. So it's possibly not surprising that the two bits of Xbox footage I have been provided with have both been from people with their own channels. We actually have something in common with the last uh, game we had uh, as well from Jack the Ripper in that this is another British medium tank, although this time it's the Comet rather than the Tier 10. I am actually, I, I don't know if the uh, Xbox version's caught up, it might still be the FE4202 that they have as the British Tier 10. I don't know if they have the Centurion Action uh, Mark 10 yet, but uh, either way, I mean, the, the Comet is the Comet, and if you don't know this thing, well, the uh, turret front's pretty reasonable once you had it upgraded. The gun is a bit lacking in penetration, but he's top tier, so that doesn't matter as so much. It also has excellent gun depression and excellent damage per minute, and both of those are going to come in very handy in this game, especially the rate of fire. So he's already spotted a T21, and that's a T25 AT up there. And I will say, most of the time in this game, I'm going to be saying, you know, the heavy tank, or the tank destroyer, or the medium tank, because I don't get any minimap markers with labels, and I don't know what tanks are unless he's kind of highlighting them, because otherwise it's just a symbol. So we can see there, that's a T29 over there, for instance. That's one of their top tier heavies. In fact, I think that's maybe their only top tier heavy. Also looks like he just got hit by artillery or something because he just lost 250 health, so that's rather nice. Mad Friday at this point decides, not quite sure why, but to press up and he maybe figures if there was any medium tanks or anything in this position, he would have seen them by this point. So there we go, there's that T29 again. Mad Friday auto aims there and bounces but then gets a hit, so that's nice. The guy turns and fires, which uh, misses, and well this is a little awkward for Mad Friday because the... Uh, Hull armor on the T29 is not great, and oh, there we go, he's taking a hit himself, but it's good enough to bounce at least some shots from uh, a gun with the, the Comet's penetration. So, Mad Friday falls back a little bit here, and it actually looks like all three enemy medium tanks went to that north corner, so the chances of somebody whizzing up behind Mad Friday here seem to be fairly minimal. The T29 is to his left, he's got the three mediums to his north, there's at least two tank destroyers camping at G4, and I guess uh, the other heavies must be in the south? So, the enemy team is kind of um, spread out a bit in this one, and it's uh, unusual, at least on the World of Tanks uh, PC version, to have this particular area just so free and available for use, but uh, the fact that it is, is very useful for a machine like the Comet because you can get here and the gun's accurate enough and like I said the rate of fire is very very good, but uh, if you get the shots you can just put the damage in and potentially he could get round behind these guys as well, but he does have to be wary of enemy artillery because you don't want to get hit in the back in something like a Comet by uh, an enemy arty. And I, I have watched this through already and I know each team's got a tier 6 arty. Or at least I think his team's got a tier 6 RT as well. But uh, even so, the tier 6 RT uh, could take off quite a big chunk of his hit points if it's a penetrating HE shot. So he's managed to get some shots into the VK. It's, it's pretty... Uh, he's got a, quite a narrow window to work with here. He needs the VK to push out before he can really do anything. But uh, he is getting a bit of damage here. And there we go, there's a Panther there as well, we can see. So this is their top tier mediums, it looks like. And they're actually pushing. And it looks like the T29's gone up and around with them as well. And, oh, he's just been uh, damaged in the track by a Tiger, so he decides now's the time to move. So we don't know where their Tiger fired from, but it, it's, um, from the minimap traces, it's looking like kind of G7, G8, that area. So he decides at this point, well, they're engaging, uh, what's that, a light tank, a heavy tank, and a tank destroyer frontally, so this seems like a good time to come up around behind them, because the chances are there's not going to be anything looking his way, although, as I've said, the artillery might take an interest, but that, you know, the, the arty needs time to swing around and to target him and to aim, 
and then there's usual RNG of artillery involved as well, so he clearly decides it's worth the risk. Now rather than push out and go for the lower health T29, he instead is going for this Panther M10, who kind of belatedly realised, like he's already gotten four shots in, but by the time the Panther turns his turret and fires, this is nearly half the Panther's, Panther's health just gone already. So this is where that range of fire just comes in so useful. Although that was an unfortunate bounce. That was just RNG sending his armour, uh, sending his shells and also that angle. And there's the artillery. So yeah, I don't think he took much damage there, but he did get trapped. And uh, he's actually taking a little bit of damage from the, uh, the Panther M10 as well, I think. Although he also bounces a shot or two. Anyway, one more and he's got him, so that's good. The Panther's still full health. And at, at this point, I would have gone a little bit further around because he's still very vulnerable to artillery here and the panther obviously uh, hadn't maybe noticed the panther m10 getting destroyed but he is noticing his own hit points disappearing and you would hope somebody would at least notice that much now that's a bit unwelcome something has appeared behind him and i don't know what except that it's a heavy tank so somebody is now shooting him from the rear so he goes forward a little bit again, and one more shot will take the panther, so that's nice. The T-29 in the meantime has died, and that's a friendly tank destroyer on heavy, but I don't know which ones. So, uh, it's without the minimap labels, that looks like a KV something, it's a little hard to tell. What is that, a KV-1S? T-150? Anyway, it's something Russian, it's a Russian heavy. The tank destroyer is going back to aid their uh, Black Prince. Now, I know it's a Black Prince back at the cap, I know that much at least. And it's at this stage, well, their tank destroyers make a move. Now the T25 AT, as you can see, easily the priority here. He's actually managed to take off some of his very few remaining hit points by dropping down there. But uh, Mad Friday still has to be wary of the SU, because the SU with the derp gun, if he gets the turret, well, a couple of hundred damage maybe, but hello, flak bus, what? <laughs> well, okay then. Now if you notice that trace on the minimap, uh, yeah. Mad Friday was clearly so focused on those two tank destroyers in front of him that he failed to notice the guy coming in from the side, but still, that guy just basically suicided himself on Mad Friday's tank. I don't know why he did that, because the KV-1 got in a shot as well, so rather than do the sensible thing and, you know, peekaboo and maybe do some damage, he just went for it and basically threw his tank away in the process. Now, Mad Friday was able to safely drop down behind that... Uh, that SU and that's fine and with the KV-1 they took out the SU but the KV-1 or whatever it was has just died himself so that's the enemy Tiger that's up there and that's a VK-3001H so that's tier 5. I'm guessing it was KV-1 because if the enemy team had a 3001H then it would make sense for his team to have a, a KV-1. Now the 3001H is slow, doesn't have a lot of armour but it does have a nice gun so he's actually just taken a little bit of damage from this guy and he's not just going, oh, it's a tier 5 heavy, it's a tier 5, and just sitting there. He's actually working this gun depression, he's working this, uh, this position to pop up and get the shots off. And that makes it harder for the other guy to aim as well. So, although the VK's gun could potentially have been a threat, he only actually took one hit there and was able to demolish that guy quite easily. Because with his rate of fire versus a tier 5 heavy tank's hit points... That is not that much of a challenge. Now, if you look right now, and it's just checking, so there's a Tiger, a T25-2, which is that tank destroyer, and the enemy AMX-13F left alive. He's the only tank left on his own team, because the Allied Black Prince went down. But if you notice at the bottom, he's got seven APCR and three HE shells left. So he's basically fired all of his AP. He started with, um, what was it, 30 rounds? 30-odd 30 rounds? I'd have to go back and check, but... Uh, he's had to do a lot in this one, clearly. He's just had to keep the gun working over and over and over. He's had 32 hits so far, we can see from the ribbons. He's had, uh, I don't even know if one of those is criticals or whatever, but fortunately for him, these guys are one-shots. Well, not one-shots exactly, but uh, the, the, the Tiger is a two-shot rather than a one-shot. A one plus one shot, yes. So he's able to take both the T25-2 down uh, and, and the Tiger down really quickly and not take any damage in the process, which is great news. So, although his allies um, did get uh, blown up by these guys, they went down swinging, and so that has made this possible, even though it's really close. 
it's now basically a matter of him finding artillery. And the question is, where is artillery? Well, it's French arty. It could run quite a lot of places. And as it turned out, he'd come to the cap, either to try and support or maybe to try and get in the cap circle and hasten the capping process. But for whatever reason, well, he's here now. So Mad Friday actually switches to HG. And that one does about the same as a, a usual uh, roll. That one does very little. That one does very little, but it's in the track. And his last APCR shell uh, of, of the game, with two shells remaining, finishes the last enemy. So there we go. That was a nice game. That was a pretty nice game. So, as you can see, boatload of XP. He's done nearly 5,000 damage. 43 penetrating hits, he actually blocked nearly 900 damage, 9 tanks destroyed, and look at this roster of like medals. So that was an Ace Mastery, Radley Walters, he got a Devastator medal, and obviously you probably won't know what one of those is, uh, that's basically 7 kills. Uh, he also got a High Caliber, a Defender, a Top Gun, and a couple of the Ribbons as well. Um, one of those is what, Bruiser, um, I don't know what the rest are, I don't have those memorized in my head, but 2500 base XP. That's pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. And you can see compared to the rest of the team, he did quite a lot. And it was actually a KV1 that was with him. So there we go. So yeah, there was some of his team that were doing little bits here and little bits there. And it was enough damage that he was able to swoop in and, and get those low health guys at the end. But you look at the damage counts of his team overall versus his damage count. And the DPM of the Comet really came in useful in that one. It really did. And uh, he would have struggled to do that in a tank that just couldn't fire as quickly, that couldn't get the damage out as fast. So that ended up being a really nice game indeed. So you'll find links to uh, Mad Friday's channel below, or a link, I suppose. Why would I say links plural? I don't know, because reasons. And if you've liked this replay, well, you can hit the like button, you can leave any comments about it below, you can subscribe to my channel, and as always, stay tuned for more.